All right. Welcome to the SimCast episode 27. Uh, here on the SimCast today, we have uh, Eloa. Welcome, Eloa. Hello. And we have Chibi Bree. Welcome, Chibi. Hello. So Eloa is a returning guest here on the SimCast, and uh, Chibi is new to the cast. She's not been on here as a guest before, so this is a bit special. Um, usually on the first SimCast, I like to let everybody that's new here kind of give everybody an idea of maybe what some of their goals are in Ashes of Creation as far as creating content, things that they are looking forward to doing and uh, kind of contributing to the community. So Chibi, if you'd like to kind of let everybody know about that. Hello, everyone. I am Chibi Bree. I am one of the main hosts of our podcast, Ashes Party of Five. It's a discussion opinion roundtable. And um, I'm currently working on setting up times and abilities for me to stream on my Twitch, as well as making my own intro to Ashes videos on YouTube. Um, I hope to eventually do class guides, especially on Priest, because I do Cleric. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to test out all those builds and then um, upcoming Castle Sieges. Right on. Awesome. I do have to say, since we can talk about it now, we can. Steven lifted the NDA on uh, discussing things from Alpha Zero, right? We can't show anything from it. We can talk about it. I just got to say the cleric hits like a truck. It's got a specific ability that hits pretty hard. So I could see them being pretty tough on the battlefield in the future. Um, also, uh, one interesting thing that's kind of on the uh, horizon is Chibi Bri and myself are actually working together on a project for Ashes of Creation. It's um, origin is based on lore. Um, can't really talk too much about it other than that right now, but you can probably look forward to seeing something come from that here in the near future. Um, with that being said, ladies, I'd like to kind of dig right into this. I, I love discussing lore and I know that, that you do too. Um, so for our first bullet point, I want to talk about the, the gods and the monsters in the world of era. And, uh, this is something that fascinates me the most, I think, as far as lore and story go. It's something I'm really curious about. I know Steven has mentioned many times that uh, he wants the players to discover the lore of Ashes through the game. He doesn't really want to put a lot of that out there. He doesn't want it to be, you know, like you go to World of Warcraft and it's like, well, here's the story, you know, and mm -hmm. we don't really, he doesn't really want to give too much of that. And I can respect that. I think that it's going to leave a lot to the imagination. And that's where I'd like to start today. So that being said, what, what are some of your, your speculation, some of your, your thoughts or ideas about what could have happened with that pantheon of the gods that we've, we've heard about in Ashes? Uh, we know that there was, <clears throat> excuse me, a struggle between the gods and the pantheon and that this is where corruption came from on Vera. Um, what are some of your ideas of what that could have looked like? Um, go with Chibi first. So it's really interesting because the lore on the wiki tells us that there was this huge fight and I can only wonder um, what the fight was about. Maybe there was something happening on Vera before that the gods weren't approving of and they're fighting over to see who should control Vera. I don't know, maybe. Uh, there is a card game called Ashes and what you do play... Um, Ashes is actually Ashes, Ashes of the Phoenix board. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. really, Heard really close idea. But um, I played a few times with Vertec, and it's basically you're, you're a, a Phoenix board and fighting another Phoenix board and trying to control whatever territory. It's really cool. But it, it kind of, for me, goes along the same ideas of what I think possibly might have happened with our gods of the Pantheon. I'm not saying that this is where Ashes got their... Um, their inspiration from or anything it just parallels you know hmm. what you Amelia? yes i think it's very interesting when you have you tell a story and you have this creative story which is how the world has been created and uh here in a lot of uh, worlds in the fantasy uh, universe you have a pantheon of god because pantheon of god is a lot more exciting to write story about that when you have just a monotheist sort of religion so because you can have conflict it's like uh, 
humanity on a higher level, like mm -hmm. some mythology, like the Norse mythology or yeah. the Roman mythology, etc. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the fantasy are based on those mythology that we have. We, we very often retrieve the same sort of archetype. And here, that's according to the information we have, we had 10 gods and we have a conflict that happened that divide them into good and evil. So how it happened? Will it be five good guys and five, and five evil ones? Or will it be uneven? could be something different, a little bit like the World of Warcraft lore, where you have the Titan and you have one, Sargeras, which is bad and corrupted, and the mm -hmm. other are good and they they are trying to, to settle and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't work well that way. Um, it can be anything. And then you have something a little bit more complex than just evil versus good, which is like the pantheon of uh, Forgotten Realm where each god have different level of goodness. Uh, some are loyal good, some are chaotic good, some are chaotic bad, some neutral. You know, you can have more subtlety. Mm -hmm. So how much many case it will be, how much dark and light it will be, mm -hmm. or will it be more subtle? Will we have more clan than just two facing each other? Right. So we can think about that. Yeah, it's... Uh... You know what I think of too is when you think of World of Warcraft, you think of Sargeras. Uh, one one thing about you know that story in particular is it's kind of a matter of perception as to whether he's really evil or not. I mean, we can we can say like he definitely. I mean, he's done some bad stuff. He's done some pretty terrible things. He's been the influence of quite a many terrible things, and in some ways him and Illidan in the story of World of Warcraft are very similar in that way that they look at absolutes and they, they look at the problems. And so like, I think with Sargeras, the thing that's interesting is there was this other thing outside of what their, that pantheon, you know, of the, mm -hmm. of them was, uh, where the conflict kind of derived there, uh, because his perspective was, it was dealing with the void. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, and for him, it was like the burning legion is to, to do this. And then, you know, uh, I think that a big part of, and I could be a little off on this, but I'm pretty sure if I remember my lore correctly, uh, his problem with the races and stuff like that in 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 uh, Azeroth uh, is a lot like we've seen in Elder Scrolls Online or the Elder Scrolls universe, where the Daedric princes have problems, or you know, you have the Adric princes and the Daedric princes, and then the Daedric princes, you know, the, a lot of you know, uh, Molag Ball, for example, <clears throat> he. Uh, he has a pretty significant problem with the races existing because of this other other element that he's in dispute with the Adrix, uh, Adrix princes and stuff. And so I, I kind of wonder if it's going to be similar to that. Like there's this uh, external element that we aren't aware of. Yeah, and e yeah. exactly. Because the corruption that has decimated Vera is maybe not related to the gods themselves. Mm -hmm. It could be external to the gods. Mm -hmm that we do not know about and mm -hmm. this could be interesting that you have all the pantheon of god that are 10 gods of creation right and they are facing something which is uh, like anti-creation or void or mm -hmm. you know death or whatever mm -hmm. you can see and even if you have bad gods like fire for instance right. violence anger war that right. kind of archetype it's still on the side of life versus the right. nihilism of certain other the forces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I call yeah, it the Thanos. Uh, what did you say, GB? Sorry. Sorry, I was That's gonna it. say the other interesting thing is that they says there's ten gods but six religions. So uh -huh. like there's four gods that are either not in a religion or maybe coupled. Like you've got India, which has multiple gods within the religion. Right. Yes. So this sounds really interesting and uh -huh. um. I also wanted to say maybe maybe it was the war of the gods that started the corruption. Yeah, I mean they. Mm -hmm. So we talk about in in the story of. Sorry, I got a cat that's pawing me, dude. It's not the time, man. <laughs> Gosh, you know I I I I know that the corruption is delivered via these harbingers that you hear about in Delia's story and everything. Um, but I mean, I'm kind of wondering about that too. Uh, but you know, you kind of brought up a good segue to the next next point that I wanted to discuss too, and I, I think some of where I might have gone as a as a reference off of your point, Chibi, probably will be talked about in a little bit. But 
um, because I have some thoughts, uh, but I'm going to kind of hold off on that. So speaking of religion and worshiping, what what are some ways that we think that we could see that? Like, I know that atheism is a thing in the game, right? It's one Mm -hmm. thing that you don't have to choose a religion. Um, I'm curious what we might, how's worshiping going to look like? We know that there's religious nodes and we know that there will be, you know, religious temples. Uh, so what is worship going to look like? How's that going to impact the world? What are some ways you, you can think of that existing in the game? I think that's going to be super exciting. This is one of the aspects that got me the most excited. Um, because I think it leads to something very interesting. In Dungeon and Dragon, I always enjoyed to follow a god because it's influenced um, uh, your abilities, that your you know your abilities, your vision of things. Um, I don't really understand people that really want to be atheist in a game like this because it's not the same way that we are atheists in real life. Right. Uh, here in that world, it is a fact that there is God. Yeah. You, you cannot not believe in that. It's just there. Uh, it's not to discuss. You can choose to not follow them maybe, but uh, in any case, you cannot say, I don't believe in the God because they are there. <laughs> it's, it's a story. It's an imaginary world. So <laughs> you don't have to decide about that. So I think, and I hope, and I think that's how it will happen, to choose a cult or to choose to praise that god versus that one, let's say, for instance, the goddess of love or the god of war, you will probably unlock different abilities or it will influence your skills. Uh, You will have certain quests to do. Maybe you will find some items or you can purchase some item after a reputation grind or I don't know what you can imagine, but it will certainly shape the world. And the fact that you have nodes and that it's influence a node, let's imagine, that you have a node and it's the god of war and super aggressive and the node become more martial because of it and in front of it you have the node of the goddess of love and it's more peaceful and the crops are i don't know um, more fertile and produce more material and mm-hmm. you know can imagine a lot of things like that and awesome uh for from my perspective as as a dm or gm4 or pathfinder dnd I loved it when people had gods because I could use that as a GM of like, okay, this person's struggling. They're not rolling really well. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, pray to your God. And they're like, what? I'm like, pray to your God. And they're like, oh, okay. So I'm like over here jotting down information. Like (laughs) I I want them to be able to progress. So like, they're like, oh dear, whatever God, I forgot which gods are in like D&D and Pathfinder, but they're like (sighs) praying it to like, please show us the way. And then like, I I slip them a a piece of paper and they're like, oh, my God has answered my prayer. And then like, (laughs) we continue to role play through it. (laughs) Yeah. um, I feel like something like that might be a thing where like, um, maybe if something's hidden or you you don't have the knowledge of something, Mm -hmm. maybe by worshiping or, or, uh, praying to whatever religion you you've gone towards um will help to as Aloha sh- said also to show you things maybe through a quest line or something but um I also think maybe uh that will have a lot to do with uh maybe how the node progresses mm-hmm. also as Aloha said <clears throat> but um maybe in more of a, a way of um something that is a little more um oriented as in like maybe it could progress the node faster because now you have this extra quest line that you didn't have before that everybody who also follows that religion can can do and the nodes build up based off of questing and quest lines and such in the area so maybe there might even be a dungeon that sprawls open randomly that is uh shown to you through um maybe the gods will or something i don't know it sounds, mm. it sounds, it sounds interesting i've done a lot of D and pathfinder and i can't wait to see how they apply it to this mm-hmm. i think if i recall correctly they have explained that you had four type of nodes and they will work in a very different way like the military nodes it's all about being good in pvp and it will give you that's how you progress it and that's how that's the kind of content you will unlock it like uh pvp mission and stuff like that 
the commercial nodes or the merchant nodes. It will be more about uh, exchanging, having good um, exchange with other cities and to have a market and all that kind of things. And if I recall correctly, they have said that the religion node will be related to lore. So the people that really enjoy to do quests will um, will make this node developed and will unlock quest line. And it will really be uh, how you progress the metropolis. I think, yes, that's, that was about it. So you progress the metropolis of a religious node through quest, while a military node, you progress it through a uh, fight and warfare and a commercial note will be about merchants uh, and stuff like that. And the politic note will be about electing a person to be the director of the metropolis. So I think that's important, interesting because it's also show that you have four different nodes for four different type of players. So people that are really interested into PVPing we're more likely going to a military node because that's the kind of activity that are for them. Personally, clearly, I'm a story person. I like quests. I don't care about making business with the auction house or <laughs> to political with other people or to. You know? So I really want the religious node. I really want it to God that pleased me too, <laughs> not the God of War. <laughs> you want a, you want the God of Chibi that drops you a <laughs> drops you a special I favor want the when you pray. I the sea that <laughs> can pray the Kraken on my island to the goddess of the sea. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome <laughs> you know it's funny too because like we know we know that with the the, the divine nodes as they're being called and so here's the thing so we you know we mentioned like you know might might be able to to spawn a quest or something and so this is one thing i really like and this is reading a direct quote uh from from what steven had said about keeping lore close to the chest because the lore has implications outside of the mmorpg so i get it but he said uh you know we intend to make it to take it much further but I want it to be something that the players get to reveal themselves, not just handed to them, not not that way so that the experience isn't then lost. Um, they should feel they're experiencing this, uh, that it relates to them on a personal level. And so I think about, we know that story arcs are something that can be found through our, you know, uniquely found through our experiences in the world. And I think tying religion into that, I think we're definitely going to see things like special quests. And I'm really interested in seeing how from one divine node to another, uh, how, how you know, the different quests that are found maybe by the players who have these different religions that are then on these divine nodes, because divine nodes aren't specific to a religion. So you've got, you know, you're going to have these divine yeah. nodes. Oh, they are not right. specific to a religion. So, I mean, right. it's not like you're going on the node of the island. Oh, there's a divine node. <laughs> the there. island node again. <laughs> yeah, of course. But that's what we were talking about. Okay. Right. That's where I'm going to play. <laughs> I'll be right there with you. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, on that node, so it's a divine node. So, I know, oh, right. it's a divine node. It's not a military mm -hmm. one. But then, is it that you can choose which uh, divinity you're praising? So on, let's say on my server, it will be the goddess of love and on a different server, the same node will be the god of war. Or is it that each god has their domain and so the node is linked secretly to a mm. certain god. You have six right. gods somewhere, so you have right. six nodes hidden that are related to one god. So how do you think it will happen? That's a good question. See, I, we know that divine nodes, there will be competition for temples. Like that's part of the structure for a divine node. So I'm kind of wondering too, if like maybe a divine node has X amount of temples, like let's say uh, how many religions, four religions, and we'll say four, four temples per that divine node. It makes me wonder if, because, you know, whoever's leading the, that node, whoever's leading that metropolis, right? That node, whoever's the, the person that leads that, you know, what, what level of control they're going to have are they going to be able to say like well we have four nodes and <clears throat> we know that each of these nodes is for each of the religions um so then is the competition based around like well i want to be the leader of this particular religion because that's my god or is it like 
those can be a variety. It could all be the same God. And then, you know, is there some kind of, uh, you know, uh, edit that, <clears throat> excuse me, is, is kind of like dictated by the leader of that metropolis that has an overall kind of arcing narrative impact to the node. And then these are like sub uh, religious like impacts or whatever. I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm actually, that kind yeah. of leads us to the next point too. So religious temples, uh, what, what's the impact of religion going to look like? What are, what are some of your ideas, GB? I'm pretty excited because I mean, on the website that they say that, um, you progress your religions by building these temples and progressing the temples. Mm -hmm. And, um, one of the big benefits is an augmentation that's come from certain religions onto your primary skills. Right. Me as a cleric, I'm super excited about this because I'm like, hmm, okay, so I wonder which god I should I should choose to follow so that I can get the best out of my augmentation right. to be the best cleric. Maybe it, there'll be perhaps an augmentation that allows me to uh, spend less mana and mm -hmm. be able to sustain life better. Mm -hmm. And that's something that makes me super excited as well as... Um, the fact that choosing, like, this kind of reminds me again of Star Wars The Old Republic because you had the light and you had the dark. Right. And that's pretty much what they're saying they're they're trying to get us to go go with here is not, not necessarily something like for casualty, but so that you can add a, a different element to your storyline, you know. Um, I loved being able to choose to go back and forth between the two. And I had like somebody who was perpetually almost going to join the dark side, but usually went with the light side mm -hmm. for Star Wars. And I had a lot of fun with that. And um, the same thing applies here, how your choices impact your gameplay. And the this being one of the main choices mm -hmm. is the, the, the religion and how that's going to impact people's gameplay. I'm pretty excited to see that. Yeah, and I, I think from a node level, it's very exciting too to know more about the system because if the node is just a divine node, meaning and there's no dominance of a specific gods in in that node uh, from the start or from the gameplay point of view, meaning that it's the action of the player that will make the node. Like the same way your node will start to look like the race that has the participate the most. Uh, so if you have a lot of friend orc and you're all going to do quests there, then suddenly your mm -hmm. node will look like an orc node, which is super cool. That's super exciting already oh, yeah. just in itself. But then as it's a divine node, and if you can't... Um, also, it's, it, it starts to sprout different quest lines that are just choose a religion, go pilgrimage, find the shrine of what, blah, blah, whatever. And it will take the shape of how much followers of that religion have. So you will have a religion that will start to take dominance over the other because there's more players mm -hmm. that follow that religion. So okay. that god will be the god of the nodes. But it also means that inside... Um, a same node, you can have some sort of conflict from trying to dominate, you, to choose your god, or you try to convert other players. No, don't go to that god. Let's let's praise this one because uh, this one is best, or this one has the best bonuses, or you know. Right. It's it's very interesting to see how much the choice of the player will shape your whole experience and how much. Um, your capability of having people joining your cause will also influence that. So if you are the guild master of a big guild and you decide, hey, guys, we are all be orc. No, you don't be an elf. We are all be orc. <laughs> and we will dominate this. So our node will be orc. And we will all uh, follow this god because we want <laughs> this god. And you, you can influence people like that. Uh... It's, it's pretty cool. I, like I can that. imagine as an elf, like walking up on this completely orc, like <laughs> node, and they're all like, ah, like praise the uh, religion, and I'm like an elf over here, like, what are they doing? <laughs> oh, those, those silly vex, star children, all of them. Yeah, it's, you know, it, it, it's so exciting. I think. Um, also, what if you do something genuinely, so uh, organically, without 
asking people to do anything. So you play a game, you don't know what you're doing, you're not part of any game, you're just an individual doing your own thing. How much impact you will feel that you're doing? Or do you really feel that you need to be part of a group to have an influence? Mm. Or will you be able as individual feel that you, you, you're, you're what you're doing can't at all? All right. You know, I think the, the idea of uh, <clears throat> augments from religion impacting maybe the way that some abilities look or something could be really cool. Because um, we already know that they've, They've done some some dabbling with that. I mean, part of the Kickstarter Kickstarter uh, backer rewards had to do with uh, special special effects for skills, and so I think this is just my idea. Let's say that we've got the god, uh, you know, Orbis or something, because we're going to go with you know light orbs or whatever. And let's say it's the god of light, and Orbis is. Uh, you know, the God of Light, I mean, obviously Sim's going to follow the God of Light. <laughs> Absolutely Sim's going to follow the God of Light if you're going to tell me that, like, every one of my abilities as a paladin is going to bring down the light from the heavens. Yeah, that's it. Hey, Sim, where's your guild going to try to influence? What kind of node is that going to be? Divine node, because I want Orbis, <laughs> and I want my light orbs, and yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I'll go ham with that all day. Judge me. I don't care. And I'll, and I'll be a dagger ear. Just saying. It's a thing. It's fine. Don't judge me. And, and what if the gods <laughs> had archetypes that were a little bit more unusual? Oh, yeah. Like, what, what's some ideas yeah. of unusual? What would that be? I don't know. The god of food. The god of food. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw a chicken like at you. Why not? Uh, it will be a god that influenced your harvest or ah, your cool. cooking <clears throat> things that will be good for crafting, for cropping. Like that. Uh, uh, and, and you you will have different, that could be very interesting because this game is very vast. Mm -hmm. So you have PvP in it, so you need to have something that benefits PvPers. Mm -hmm. You have crafter, so you need something that benefits your crafter. You will mm -hmm. have role placed. I think that is very into influence that too. So you, you can really have different type of god that will have an influence on different type of gameplay so if you have the classical god of war that will benefit maybe pvpers they will have more offensive attack or corn control or whatever if you have a god that's all about harvesting it will benefit the crafter so if you are a crafter you will have to praise that god it will benefit it more than if you have the the war bringer and mm -hmm. you could have a god of shadow for anyone that wants to be stealthy and stuff mm -hmm. like that you know you can have maybe more a little bit less traditional or or the god of sea that will influence sheep and um, yeah, yeah. you know everything that happened on water <clears throat> and stuff like that. Yeah, also, that Poseidon archetype. Yeah. Also, I know people that are excited about the um, the what is it where you can bring uh, people back to life as a summoner. All oh, right. A necromancer. Yeah. So if mm -hmm. there's okay, so they said there's some gods that are more uh, that contributed to corruption and stuff. Mm-hmm. And one of the first things that make me think of corruption, as far as a class is going to go, is, is probably the necromancer. Mm -hmm. So I wonder how that's going to work. Like, what if you praise a god that that is evil and does go towards the corruption? Mm. How, is, how is that going to look? But would it be that way too? Because you have ten gods in the story, and you can only pray six of them. So that means that there's four of them that are doing bullshit on their own. <laughs> and so maybe maybe you could have six gods of different things, like the god of war, the god of sea, the god of harvest, the god of shadow, whatever. But they are all sort of for this world. And then you have four our gods that are the ones that cause the corruption. So that you cannot pray as a player. Mm -hmm. because it will not be good as a role player it will not go well with the story as a player maybe you can you can only side to the protection of vera and mm -hmm. you cannot side with the corruption so even if you have a god that is less good like the god of shadow or the god of war which are less they are more evil gods we can say it that way they are still on the side of protecting vera in their own way versus the the very bad bad one so you will have 
different level of being bad, <laughs> sort of different mm -hmm. degree of heaviness. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty, pretty interesting idea too, is like the variation of, of darkness or light too. The idea of, you know, just there being a spectrum as opposed to mm -hmm. just being black or white, you know, polarizing one or the other and, and kind of completely ignoring that there's a possibility for an in-between on those two ends, opposing ends the, the spectrum. <clears throat> um, so let's talk a bit more about the corruption then. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that is intriguing to me. Uh, and I've had some speculation. Like one, one thing I've wondered is we know that in PVP, if you PK someone, you do it outside of normal PVP, right? Outside of Guild Wars, Castle Sieges, you know, trying to take over metropolises, caravans, outside of that system of PvP, you can you can gank someone if you want to. You could even potentially just camp someone, right? <clears throat> but this comes at a cost. If it comes at a cost to your stats specifically, to the point where if you do uh, you know, camp someone and you know gank them enough then essentially you're just useless you you <laughs> your paper i mean you're, you're worthless you can't do pvp raids and none of that stuff you won't be able to be of any use really i mean maybe one perspective i can see where currently they haven't said anything negative towards it, uh, this being a thing is in creating the charters uh, crafting the declarations of war between guilds for example that takes crafters so that's the only area that I think maybe so far, as far as we know, that that won't impact you. But what they what he said is that they've said is is that participating in these these types of uh, behaviors and diminishing your stats is is you're building corruption. And so if this is corruption, I'm <clears throat> as a as a lore crafter fascinated to see. And this is just some speculation on my part. How cool would it be? if that corruption isn't just you gain corruption so your stats are lower but it actually takes on a physiological component and your character's mm -hmm. actual appearance changes like maybe i know oh that guy's corrupt he's been making bad choices how can i tell he looks like he's got a case of the corrupt right he's got some purplish red <laughs> red mm -hmm. kind of like <laughs> bubbles and you know like i think of star wars the old republic what happens if you go more dark side right you start to yeah. You get these like veins and stuff and it starts to spread and you look more sickly. And even in the Elder Scrolls Online, you get that appearance change, right? Vampirism does that. And if you progress through stages, it builds and it builds and you look more and more like a full-blown, you know, vampire. Uh, so, you know, uh, thinking about what might spawn, what kind of spawns are we going to see from corruption? That's one element, like potentially it's not spawning something, but it changes you. What would be some cool things that we can see out in the world? Maybe something that spawns, effects on the world by corruption, or even those types of choices. Yeah. It is indeed very interesting because to, to see how it ties with the lore and what um, crumble mm -hmm. or insight can it give us. The fact that you're, you as a PvPer, if you do something reprehensible, which is not which is kind of reprehensible in the, in the, the way that you're ruining the fun of other players. So this is something, it's a mechanic that are installed so you don't have players that are ruining the fun of other to, to, to force or encourage fair play. Yeah. So play nice. You do fight, you do PvP, but you do it following the rules of you know respect and, and honor that, that are supposed to be. So if you betray that, you become corrupted. But would that mean that you have in the lore this really evil side which is the corruption that we all fight and mm -hmm. if you are becoming an asshole in game as a player because you choose to be an asshole you are considered as part of that evilness in the lore or in, and so it's 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 kind of include or imply that every player that play on vera is considered as a good person with of course conflict between each other from interest but that's more territorial conflict so it's we can say it's not evil it's just you know warfare or on a regular basic or would it has a, um, 
in the lore, in the story, in the quest line, the possibility for players to really choose a dark past and they have space for them for being those bad person. That's also one of the question of I'm wondering. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts, Chibi? Well, so I can see also on the corruption part of the wiki that um, they have a physical look to when things do gain corruption. And I know also from the wiki <laughs> mm-hmm. that as a cleric, you can um, <clears throat> you can kind of be able to see if somebody has some corruption. Um, you'll be able to know. And so that'll be interesting from a, a cleric point of view because I could be running around and I could see that a player has gained some corruption whether it be physical, like the way that they have this corruption or this corrupted troll concept where he is normal on like one side, on the other side, he's like completely dark and there's like these bright dark red veins just shining through his dark skin. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's creepy almost, but um, at the same time, uh, it's it's very like, you know that that thing has been corrupted for sure. Like there's no guessing. And it's also interesting because they say that corruption tarnishes the character's spiritual essence. Their ability to utilize Bear's magic found within them is diminished. So going back to the PvP concept, if somebody does have corruption, the reason why they're getting more and more weak is because their, their essence, their spiritual essence is being diminished by their evil deeds. And... Yeah. I think it'll be interesting to see if maybe there there is a physical physiological reaction that you can see where like after somebody's killed you and you see them and their skin starts to turn darker and maybe like their veins start popping out to the eventually maybe they might turn into this dark creature with mm-hmm. red red lava veins i don't don't know what you call it but yeah (laughs) but if it's something that only cleric can see it should be something that you can see when you activate a talent or something or an ability so it's probably only the cleric that will see a kind of dark aura for Uh, instance yeah so clerics can sense broken or corruption not necessarily like we're the only ones that can see it but we we have more of a sense for it because we are Mm -hmm. like masters over the essence of light basically mm-hmm. it's kind of like how a rogue would be able to see a trap door because that's within their class kit hmm. um right so maybe if it's in the very early stages like say say uh i'm not gonna say sim uh let's see say vertex decided to kill huh. sim <laughs> he <is not> <laughs> yeah uh, i don't feel like that say- would be one of his decisions did you hear that just saying <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same same vertex decided to kill Sim, and I I saw like an early version of corruption coming from him, and then he killed Aloa, and that corruption grew. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and then me hiding in the back trying to heal the both of you, like he comes after me, and then like after he's killed me, then like you can definitely see something, you know. So mm-hmm. I I think maybe earlier in like the early early stages, I could be like something's not right with that person. I think. I think we should run. <laughs> oh <my God>. He's out. <laughs> you know what? He's out there player <laughs> killing people. <laughs> I, I like the idea that Lois said too, because you know earlier she said that that you know what if these other four you know what if there's these other this other set of gods that went with corruption and stuff and this is like the influence from a lore perspective we get to see in game of of that it's it reminds me a lot of like the burning legion and wow like you know when someone's infected with fell magic Hmm. you know but i I like i'm I'm curious i'm so curious about what that's really gonna look like um yeah but then it will it will maybe implies that when you have this corruption, which is really a mechanics to avoid people to be as whole. And of mm-hmm. course you will have people doing that, but they are mm-hmm. seriously handicapped. So they, <laughs> they probably yeah. will not want to keep it that right. way. Mm-hmm. But that will really show that you have this separation between what's evil and corrupted, and that's what everyone else is fighting for, 
beyond the warfare between territorial things or who want to be the politician of that city or whatever. So we have in the same times internal conflicts or not, depending on which area you are, obviously. And in the same times, you have the general conflict, maybe the, the sort of quest to save the world, you know, aspect. Mm -hmm. So that will mean that even if you are praying to six different gods, each of those gods that uh, are the master of an area domain, like the god of nature, the god of war, the god of whatever, fire, maybe it will be more elemental based. We don't really know. But all those six gods are on the good side of things and uh, are giving just flavor to what you're doing. But it is not, uh, you cannot choose to be an evil person. So, you know, that they said too, on, on, and this is from the wiki again, but <clears throat> I feel like this is pretty. So the 10 deities within Ashes of Creation formed a pantheon, blah, blah, blah. There was a celestial struggle among the gods that fractured them into good and evil. This is, when I hear that, I just think, so there's got to be, I feel like there's got to be this other element we're not aware of, like some, some sort of a, a third party to this, you know, two sides or something. I'm really, I'm really curious. I, I could be wrong. It's speculation at this point, but when you hear them split between be good and evil, that that implies, you know, literally bad choices and good choices mm -hmm. when you say good and evil. And so, yeah. what would cause a set of gods who are all, you know, div their divinity has them led on this path to where, you know, they all have some sort of maybe pure you know, existence and, and something corrupts that is it some third party? Like, is there this other entity? And now these gods become servants, you know, and then, then what's left is the ones that are trying to still fight this other entity. Is that what corruption is? Is corruption really, you know, an actual uh, manifestation of those gods who chose evil? I mean, because how do you go from choosing to be good and, and to be evil? <clears throat> That's what that's what I'm thinking about the dark and evil path and the storylines are going to be tied into this dark and evil path or, you know, more pure path, I suppose. Um, so that kind of leads me to the player narrative. Uh, you know, how's that going to elicit changes in religion? We talked about that a bit, but how might our journey, our stories as players individually impact or influence whatever this corruption is in the world? What are some of your thoughts about that? I guess it's it all depends of uh, <laughs> and we have too too little information. Yeah. I think there's two possibilities. Either uh, the players are all considered as good heroes or mm -hmm. potential heroes, which means that we will follow and the game will force us and close us in a follow of goodness or we are on the side of light or life or I don't know what you can call it. We're on the side of good versus evil. Or will you have the possibility of choosing and right. choosing to serve the evil or the good? That all depends. And it can be done in different way. Because if you have uh, this pantheon of gods and you, have, you imagine that you have um, four gods that are really corrupted, mm -hmm. And that really represent uh, evilness, like the god of death, the god of chaos, the god of uh, no chaos, maybe not fair, but you have the god of death, the god of hatred, the god of fear, the god of uh, uh, putrid, <laughs> just of uh, plague, whatever. And then in front of them, you have those six other gods and you can have the god of light like the sun you can have the, the goddess of moon you can have the god of nature or you can have a more sort of neutral terra mm -hmm. with uh, the god of war the god of love so you can see that one is a little bit more violent and evil but it's still on the side of life even if it's war is the main it's still on the side of life because mm -hmm. war it's still between living person it's mm -hmm. not annihilating everything mm -hmm. So it's there's so many different ways of allowing players to follow a part of um, a story that will lead them to conflict between each other. 
or will you be able to follow those god of darkness like really bad the, mm -hmm. the, the god of corruption but i don't think so because and, and the reason why i don't think so is the fact that when you're doing as allic behavior that no one wants in a game because they are just uh, mean towards other player and that's not the, the reason why we play uh, video games is to be fair play even if there is competition so i think that the fact that to to reprehend the players that are doing bad stuff which touch real life person they are um, corrupted that mean that the corruption is really considered as evil and we will not be able to take part of it mm -hmm. I think it also determines on uh, how or who you worship, because if maybe you are worshiping um, a god and <clears throat> or religion, and the religion may not be going the direction that you want to, you're able to change religion. You lose all progress in that religion, but you're able to change religion. So perhaps something is happening where perhaps maybe the religion you chose you thought was really good but as as it progresses uh perhaps there's a little bit more of like a corruption or something that you're not wanting out of the religion so you can just change the religion but for it to affect the node i think a lot of people would have to change out of that religion not just one or two people you know mm -hmm. but um that being said it's kind of interesting because i was also looking at the monster events which is what i imagined for corruption you have the monster coin and stuff and that can be triggered by any activity in the world, like um, node advancement, defeating a boss, or constructing certain types of buildings within a node. So that kind of makes me want to think, when I think about there's evil mm -hmm. religions that you could follow, perhaps the evil religious temple is the thing that spawns a monster coin event mm -hmm. somewhere. Maybe this evil religion's like, no, I want to rule all of the land. And all the land will be right <laughs> in my evil ways. And I yeah. just monster event happening in the next note over because the, now your your evil religious god wants to take over the land or something. It could be possible, but I have the feeling. I have the feeling that you you as a player you will not be able to be part. You will not have anything any system in place for being on the side of corruption. I think the side of corruption is something that everyone will want to fight over. Um, and so I believe that even if you have less good God or a more village God, it will be more in the line of a God of shadow, which is more like thieving, murdering. Okay, mm -hmm. it's not very cool. It's kind of evil, but it's not evil to the point of annihilating every life. Mm -hmm. It's not that's bad it's not about wiping out the world it's more about i'm getting powerful and i'm going to take all the advantage for myself so i will imagine more that you will have six different gods for six different type of gameplay and mm -hmm. for different type of quest like a lot of shadow for thief and stuff and murder and thieving a uh, lot of war for people that want to warfare mm -hmm. you will have the opposite which is love um the god maybe not the god of love because then maybe we're a bit weird <laughs> but um the god of nature which is, you know something like this but that's things i can imagine maybe a god of magic so if you're a magic person you would want to have a, like a god of arcane or something like this um i think it will be a little bit more in that line like you can imagine um well in the elder scrolls game you have also those god that all have um really define thing um and they are different from the daedric prince right. or you have that in dungeon and dragon well no in dungeon and dragon it's not a bad it's not a good example because that's completely different but i really have the feeling that you will have those four gods that are bad and and maybe doing this corruption thing that you cannot praise because you have six religion you right. have 10 gods that we know mm -hmm. and so they will be like the npcs gods with the npcs cultists maybe mm -hmm. um where you can you have to fight over them 
I think it would be more in that line, I think. Yeah, I kind of wondered about the idea of deities, you know, like almost like demigods even to like the corrupted mm -hmm. gods. Like maybe, you know, people like, you know, in uh, Elder Scrolls, not just Elder Scrolls Online, this is like Elder Scrolls universe, period. Like you have the Dark Mother, for example, for like, mm -hmm. right? And, and, you know, you have her scene and you have those kind of, they have these specific roles in the world and they don't really necessarily have you know, a broader impact on, like you said, annihilating genocide, something like that. Like we want to eliminate all life on the planet or something like that. They have very specific kind of, you know, the very specific roles and, and kind of um, goals, I guess you could say. Uh, so I, I think it would be cool to, I, I've actually wondered if you would see something like that demigods, even for these primary gods. Um, like, let's say you can't praise the gods uh, that, you know, are evil. Um, but perhaps you maybe could even, you know, praise, uh, not praise, but maybe get uh, invested in storylines that come, you come across that could have, give you the potential to not praise or worship, but maybe invest somehow in these like demigods or these like smaller deities that maybe somehow represent, you know, the gods that are corrupt and evil and you don't really even recognize it until later, you know, that'd be pretty yeah. cool. Um, yeah, could be that. There is plenty of possibility. Mm -hmm. we, we At this point, we really don't mm -hmm. know much about it. We can just try to see which elements mm -hmm. and how it could lead us to a, an understanding of what Steven Sarifan is in head <laughs> and plan for us. So I think, uh, I think you know, I have, I'm going to kind of skip and, and talk about this one a bit creature ideas right so we've all touched on it a bit today about you know religion monsters what what are some cool creature ideas what are some ways that you think that intrepid uh when when they're making ashes a creation what do you think are some ways that the devs could i mean we know the monster coin system i think that's definitely one way but could keep it interesting um interacting with these you know potential deities or creatures of darkness what would be some cool ideas for what these uh, creatures could look like? I think it would be really interesting to see um, how perhaps maybe you go into an unclaimed node and maybe that, because <clears throat> we know for the uh, lore mm -hmm. that the Tolnar fled to the Underrealm to escape right. corruption. So what if, as we're getting back to Vera, there's these areas maybe maybe an area that has some caves but it's not necessarily underground it's just there's caves and maybe within that cave there's still some corruption hiding mm. because it's noticed that a new like people have come back onto the planet now and so they hide because they don't know if we're there to exterminate which we are <laughs> <laughs> um not a doctor who reference there by the way <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but if you go into an, a, a brand new node that's been untouched, perhaps maybe there might be some corrupted there that you had to fight off. And slowly by by placing down like your religious temple and whatnot um, would allow you to uh, get rid of the corruption in the area mm -hmm. and purify the area. So that way, whatever, because um, this says that it corrupted everything. So like... I'm thinking of like in World of Warcraft when you have like the cute little bunnies and like a corrupted bunny would be like a, a uh, like a zombified bunny or something, yeah. <laughs> you know. And as as the corruption is wiped clean, either they die off or the corruption is removed from them and they become like the cute little bunny again or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, and I would I would be interested in seeing how other creatures became corrupted like that, you know, and how how if there is a way to cleanse corruption, how we could cleanse the corruption from them? Yeah, this is a good question because when we come back from Vera, it obviously tells us that the level of corruption has become um, acceptable again for the portals to reopen. Right. Or maybe, I don't know, it is time for us to fight it. I, there's different possibilities so on which degree the world is corrupt but i think the the world will mostly not be completely corrupted mm -hmm. otherwise the right. artwork that we will have seen will have been uh, mm -hmm. very weird 
nature and stuff like this. So I think we will be mostly going back to a world where the corruption is removed, but maybe the corruption want to come back. And that's how you start. So you start your adventure by recovering a world, exploring, establishing, settling, build up your civilization, like you, you just go back home and you rebuild what you have lost, mm -hmm. discovering and unveiling secret to understand what happened. And maybe you have some pocket of corruption, like Chibi described it, uh, that are still there, but they are minimal. But maybe the corruption want to come back. So maybe we'll have to face uh, a little bit like Le the Legion, burning Legion in World War Class is trying always to come back. So one one thing one thing I'm I've I've kind of like thought would be cool is you know there's these different backer rewards that Kickstarters had and stuff. And there's like a particular tier where you know you can work to create a a creature in the world. And mm -hmm. uh and that creature you end up getting as a pet as well. So that's something kind of specific to like you as a backer somehow. So one thing I, I thought was cool was like, what if, what if there was uh, this Seymour creature that, and if you know anything about Persian mythology, which is where the Seymour comes from, then you know that it's essentially some sort of an equivalent to a Phoenix. Right. And, uh, little tidbit that's actually how i got my alias it's my name's phoenix so it's and i'm persian so there's seymour for you right but mm -hmm. in a lot of games i've played I, i've never you know final fantasy has a seymour in it right and in that one it's kind of a bird creature which is not what that creature looked like in persian mythology um it's mm -hmm. more of like a head of a wolf you know peacock feathers wings you know, it's a little different. It's still a splendid, magnificent creature. That's not what it looks like. But I've always thought how cool it would be if, uh, you know, I got to create a creature and this creature was a Seamorg that was true to what, you know, it should look like and uh, true to the mythology in our world. You know, it's mm -hmm. this wise creature. And what if because of the absence of all of the the, the people and because of the corruption, how how this uh Seymour was influenced by corruption now is a mad creature and mm -hmm. doesn't recognize people anymore doesn't even recognize itself and maybe this is some creature that gets spawned uh because of certain events in the world and and that's the creature you have to take out and what if it's like got this corrupted form now i i think it would be cool to see some of these different you know people that are backers how they're getting create these beasts these these bosses or whatever that are going to be in the world get to see these different variations and, and maybe what their stories look like. I think stuff like, you know, these creatures of old, maybe these mythological creatures that were tied to lore that existed in the world now have become mad. And those are the creatures that maybe a, we have to now destroy because they threaten the well being of the planet as well. Or uh, perhaps we have an opportunity to free somehow from the corruption. And, and like Chibi was saying, cleanse from them somehow. Mm. Uh, but I think you could have both things. You could have, well, it all depends on uh, what is the story about, of course, mm -hmm. but you could very have like normal fauna and flora, which are not corrupted, but they are still violent and want to mm. eat you. And then the corrupted creature, which are two different right. things. Yeah. So I guess that it might be that. So you have behemoth or dragon right. or that kind of stuff that want to destroy or eat humanity or feast upon, but they are not corrupted. They're just like that mm -hmm. yeah, you know so it, it, we will have to see i think that it will be more on that line because from what i have perceived it's uh it will be mostly a world of adventure and i think the corruption is mostly begun in the past but it has still um some taint on it but it's not omnipresent everywhere so i think mostly we will fight wolves that are no more wolves <laughs> mm, right and uh dragon that are normal dragon oh i would love to see the return of the massive raid bosses again i haven't seen it mm. since world of warcraft do you remember the big dragons that used to exist out in the world yeah you would run across them and they took them out of the game it's long since been taken out which really kind of feels bad but uh <laughs> yeah how cool to see something like that again like a 40 man world raid that has to exist because this thing spawned and 
you know. That reminds me yeah. of a, a situation that did actually happen in World of Warcraft with a world boss, but where um, kind of ties in with corruption, perhaps. Maybe there's a corrupted boss that we have to fight in the world of uh, Vera. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, what happened when, in World of Warcraft is very sad, but... Uh, <laughs> Basically, uh, the clerics would have to constantly heal because if anybody mm -hmm. were to run back to a different node and they weren't cleansed of this corruption because they were dealing with a corrupted boss, it would spread corruption. Oh, God. Yeah, I know you're talking about <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh -huh. back, back when uh, the pets, they didn't know the pets had like some sort of corruption on them when they'd go back to the major cities of like Stormwind and spread <laughs> corruption to all the new players and... And everybody would just die, and you just uh -huh. log in. It's like a whole thing of corpses just in front of you. And like, <laughs> you have no reason why. <laughs> but I feel like that might be something interesting, um, especially if, if there's like a, a corrupted boss hidden away in, in like a dark corner of Vera or something, and hmm. he spawns out, you know, waiting to, to seize his mm -hmm. time again. But mm -hmm. we have Vera, we'll fight back and, and keep Vera clean. I think it's very interesting because this game is more about adventuring and to bring different elements that are different from what you will find in a game like World of Warcraft, which is more about, you know, having certain system that are more uh, allowing you to progress and do your own things. Here it will be more wide and flexible and you will go all over the place and... Mm -hmm. In doing different things that are just adventure, do not always lead to just a mean for in game stuff. <laughs> right, right. It's not so so uh, structured systems that we're so used to is what I'm, I'm really hoping because you know things like yeah, you log on and you do things a specific way every day. It gets it gets old and very monotonous. I think. Uh, so here's here's one thought I have. Uh, one one kind of final question because I feel like we've really kind of hit on the, all the points I wanted to really kind of explore today. But here's mm -hmm. one here's one question: What do you think causes the gateways to open again? Uh, for me, I think it's the level of corruption has dropped enough, and it's time to go back home. Mm -hmm. And it is the six gods that are uh, ruling sort of or mm -hmm. taking care of uh, the world of Vera that reopen the gates and allow the, you know, our lost civilization to come back home mm -hmm. and to, to, you know, to just come back home. Basically, that must just be that. Uh, after, maybe the, the, the conflict, the original conflict will come back. Mm -hmm. But that's maybe in the subject of a later patch or an mm -hmm. expansion or something. All right. What about you, Chibi? Well, considering uh, Delia's diary mm -hmm. and uh, the fact that I want to be an oracle, um, <laughs> cool. I'm pretty excited for that. Uh, I, if, in my idea, from what I've gathered and what I've put together, is I feel like uh, Delia's diary accounts the beginning of corruption in which... I think perhaps maybe one of the more evil gods decided to corrupt Vera mm -hmm. to wipe it out completely. And uh, that's why people started fleeing because the other gods are like, no, 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 no. What have you done? And like place these gateways so people could escape because like they don't want their creations, you know, dying due to a, a god conflict, you know. And I feel like maybe something happened where like, after the Tolnar fled and like hid under underground, basically, um, so that maybe the gods didn't know that they were there or something. And uh, I think maybe what happened to reopen the gateway is the god thought basically he's corrupted everything. Like there, everything's corrupted, everything's dead, you know. And maybe they banished whatever gods ca caused the corruption, which is why there's the four that. Mm -hmm. possibly we we don't have anything to do with with the religion and um maybe the other gods did what they could to restore it back to a neutral place and upon that they were calling the many long 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 down the line descendants back to vera to try to repopulate and restore it back to what it used to be so i've got two theories 
that I think it could be. And it ties into both of what both of you are saying. One of them does anyway. My thoughts are is the war between the gods started and the harbingers fell that we hear about in Delia's diary and that the war began to happen and potentially even maybe part, partly took place on Vera. And maybe the gates were either already, you know, were probably created somehow or were turned on from a time past, whatever. And people were allowed to leave. Not everybody made it out. Uh, and I think that they were then shut off when people left. And I'm, uh, I've got one side of me that thinks maybe the war ensued and it went on for a long time and maybe the war ended and the gods of, you know, good and light and, and all that, um, allowed the planet to either heal or did healing for the planet, whatever. And they were like, you know, welcome to welcomed us back or, um, I kind of wonder if potentially or possibly even uh, the war happened. Uh, things maybe didn't go so great uh, on either side. And it, it might even be possible that maybe some dark intention, uh, some corrupt God might have even been the ones. Maybe it was the gods of good and light that, that created those gateways. And maybe they couldn't even be accessed or turned on by these dark and corrupt gods that maybe then found a way to do it later. Uh, maybe it's that one dark, dark side left or some, one of their subjects that's been working all this time to try and figure out a way to bring people back so they can finally cleanse them and regain some kind of power back they need. And that's why the war was caused. I don't know, but I, I've kind of wondered if it's been dark intentions that turned it back on or if it's good. Hmm. I'm, I'm, I can't wait to find out because. Yeah, the speculation can can have me going in a dozen different directions. Of that. <laughs> yeah, or it could be that the gods are calling our help. Oh. Come back, help us! Oh, I like that idea too. Calling us back to <laughs> help fight for the light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know because yeah. we don't have any idea of the know. the scenario that will introduce to the Vera. Yeah. If it's just oh, the gate are open, let's go back, and then nothing. <laughs> oh, there is a virgin planet in front of us. Or if they will yeah. be, I don't know, you have a discussion with the pantheon of God. Come, hero, we need you for our <laughs> cause because blah, blah, blah. <laughs> we don't know that. Yeah, that's a, that's, we've got some great ideas. Um, last thoughts about, before we kind of tie things up here, on uh, ways that you feel like they could they can make that dynamic interesting in a way that's not been really done before. Because it's easy to replicate what we've seen over and over. Well, I think the, the, the conflict or the mythology between gods uh, will always sort of being found anywhere else, maybe in other fantasy world or mythology or whatever. And I think to be able to go away from that uh, is very, very difficult for us human beings because we're so influenced by those things. They are mm -hmm. part of or brain function and mm -hmm. and there will always be a variant of something already known but the way how it's original i think is the execution and how the system in game are implemented the fact that you can actually follow one religion and it's not right. just for fluff but mm -hmm. it's actually okay. going to influence your skills your spells your storyline the node where you live um, I think that's great. I think this, no game has done that so, so far, and I'm very, very excited to be able to have a character that's really commit to a religion and to see that it serves something, that it will guide me in my everyday uh, gaming life, that I will really be influenced, that my adventure will be completely different whether I follow the god of, of water or the god of uh, darkness, or no god at all. And the fact that they say that, yeah, of course, you can choose to be a taste, not follow any god, but you are going to miss out a lot of the cool stuff that the game has to offer, really show how important this will be from a lore perspective, but also from a gameplay perspective. And that's really exciting. Mm -hmm. And I agree, because um, I feel like in, uh, in Ashes of Creation, there's the whole religion thing and in world of warcraft i didn't really see much of that present outside of religions that npcs that we had to kill off were worshiping 
and um like you're given this story of like well they were worshiping this evil legion dude so they spawned this whole thing you know but i feel like having it from a pvp or pve or just in in general like with pathfinder and D &D ideas Mm -hmm. involved having the entire world around you affected by religion that you either choose to worship or somebody else's chooses to worship if i have to travel to go to another uh, node to sell goods because my node is story-based and i have been stockpiling all these goods and i just need to go sell them real quick you know and entering in a different nodes domain that has a different religion tied to it it just i i think it'll be really interesting to see and i wonder if there's gonna be like area perks like for spending time in this node <clears throat> as a traveler mm-hmm. that god has granted you like some few hour boon or whatever that mm-hmm. allows you to uh perhaps collect more uh embers while you're fighting or collect more cloth or material while you're fighting mm-hmm. etc just from being uh camped out there kind of like the idea of um rest xp within world of warcraft where if you stay in a mm-hmm. um big city or an inn you can you can gain extra xp so that's something that i i was thinking would kind of keep it interesting um Mm -hmm. visiting another node and just kind of hanging out there and seeing if you get a boon maybe i wonder how much it will influence clerics as well Mm -hmm. um in comparison to the other class because a cleric is supposed to be the you know, one person that really is the most following. It's a priest of the religion. So if you're a cleric from the God of War, it will not be the same if you're a cleric of the God of Water. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I know that everyone will have an influence of their spells, but how much a cleric will be changing? Will you be completely different because you're a cleric invested in a divine node right. or did um, you follow a, a certain type of god and the cleric that i've choose to be neutral what they have i'd love to see if that be... affects the uh the clothing too because you mm-hmm. know like there you have the in real life you have the catholic priest which wear a certain outfit and you have mm-hmm. other religions priests which wear mm-hmm. certain outfits so it'd be interesting to see depending on the religion that you follow mm-hmm. <clears throat> if your your base outfit is given a different look Kind of like um, how if you have orcs, the node goes into more of an orcish yeah. architecture. So I, I'd be interested in seeing how that affects us. Because, I mean, and... there there is paladins, but um, that's like a very specific type of tank, like a tank cleric, you know. So, of course, the, the paladin-esque uh, classes are going to have an effect, or anybody who has the secondary effect of cleric may have kind of an effect but not to the not to the extent that a cleric a first primary class will have yeah and then what's if the 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 spells are looking different if you have you follow the god of light your your spells are very light if you follow the god of fire your 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 spells are fiery now it could Mm -hmm. be also that kind of thing so many things that we do not know (laughs) you know one of the things i've been the most curious about is regarding legendaries and my, my curiosity is if, since we know that specific types of quests are going to be uh, possible because of religions and things like that, I've kind of wondered in regard to legendaries, if legendaries are tied to maybe religions, some of them at least, um, and these are relics from, you know, forgotten times, whatever, and yeah, perhaps, certainly. you know, perhaps, you know, in you know this religion here versus there could be like you know four different relics from four different religions for example and you know because i am following this one god i have the possibility of this quest popping and then maybe when that pops i'm able to go on this adventure take my friends go work really really hard uncover this legendary item that has this crazy rich lore backstory that helps us uncover not only lore but you know, now we have these abilities and something that helps us to vanquish a specific foe on this server that's only spawned because of a religious node that also popped this quest that also got the legendary. Now we go kill this guy, cleanse Vera. I don't know. That's some. Those are some of my ideas of how they can make gameplay interesting. And that is how you keep an alternate reality between Vera on different servers. 
I mm-hmm. think those are some, I think the node system, the node system and the overarching narrative and, and the node system in general, I think is going to be the primary thing that's going to set this game aside, keep everything interesting, keep it ever changing. So it, yeah. it doesn't like reflect all the stuff we've known before uh, and everything. So that's kind of my thought, my two cents, the ladies. It's been a fantastic episode. It's been a pleasure having both of you here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, would you like to let the viewers uh, let them know where your domains are and where you reign, how they can find you? Hello, why don't you go first? <laughs> You want me to go first? Yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. So thank you first for inviting me again. It was a pleasure to play with you, to play with you, uh, to discuss with you, Shibi. <laughs> it's always nice. Uh, so yeah, guys, you can follow me on every sort of social media, Twitter, Instagram at LOA Wendy or Twitch TV. That's where I am most of the time as I'm streaming full time during the European time from 10 a.m. to... 18 so or 6 p.m so which is maybe a little bit early for american or very late if you right. don't sleep early you can still catch me up um yeah and i have two uh, youtube channel one is my ismr youtube channel for people that want relaxation and help for sleeping there we go <laughs> And I'm TVV, and um, I know Aloha from a few other podcasts, as well as I hang out in her channel from time to time. She's an amazing streamer. I also stream. (laughs) You do. (laughs) Thank you. I also stream, but I go to college, so my streaming times are on and off. Um, A lot of my links can be found from twitch.tv backslash chibibri. I am also um, on twitch.tv twitch.tv backslash ashes party of five for my podcast as well as i have a youtube channel tv brie and my ashes party of five youtube channel so um just check those out and you'll find all the links <laughs> yes uh, i am Seymour. i've been your host all of the ladies stuff and things links will be in the description below and until next week i'll catch you on stream have a great week everyone. goodbye take care goodbye. everyone